Hello everyone, this is Life Questions and I'm your host Bill Harris. Amidst all the fear, doubt, and uncertainty about life and the future, there is hope for this troubled world, or as someone once put it, hope springs eternal. There is hope and comfort from the creator of the universe today, who in his word, though written thousands of years ago, addressed our current problems. And so our guests, who are four local pastors, are armed with the word of God, which is infallible and inerrant. They are here to give us encouragement. And I want you to meet these fine men of God at this time. They are Pastor Tim Benjamin of Wayne Street United Methodist Church, St. Mary's, followed by Pastor Ty Watson of Salina First Church of God, Pastor Brandon Green of Celebration Church in Lima, and rounding up our panel, Pastor Mark Bird of Revive Ohio, a statewide ministry. We're happy to have all of you with us today. Thank you, and Thank after you a, so much. And after a great discussion last week about the impact of coronavirus, I certainly hope people are much more encouraged today. One question that we got from viewers that I think comes out of the isolation uh, and the, the separation as a result of COVID, this person asked, what is the difference between living mm. and existing? Yeah. Pretty wide open question. Yeah, Go it's ahead. a big question I think a lot of people are dealing with today because I think we all feel like that's what we're doing a lot of right now is existing. I'm just, I'm just surviving yeah. here at my house and yeah. you know everything's messed up. I'm working from home and all this. I think the main difference is though is what, what's the purpose behind it? Is the purpose behind it is I just want to make it till tomorrow, you know? <laughs> Or is the purpose right. behind it, I'm serving a greater purpose? Yet, yes, I may not be able to go work at a food pantry. I may not be able to go down to my church and do the normal things I could do. But I can still pray. You know, I can still read scriptures. I can still do spiritual development. I, I can still encourage my family. I can still pick up the phone or send an email or a text. I can still be connected, you know, maybe not in the same way we could, obviously. But there are still things I can do to serve God's purpose, even with the restrictions that are currently upon us. Mm -hmm. And I think um, if we neglect those opportunities long enough, we just go to existing. We just keep breathing. And I think that's, a, that's kind of the bargain basement uh, uh, definition of life. You know, we, we don't measure life with a blood pressure cuff. You know, we measure life by what, what we're doing with what the time that we have. Mm -hmm. And I think that even though we may not be able to do the things we want to do or would normally do, we still have an opportunity to build God's kingdom even from our homes and the connections that we have. You know, there's a sense of um, during COVID-19 where we were having our routine completely disrupted mm -hmm. and then we went to basic comfort mode. Mm -hmm. yeah. We started to turn towards comfort food and some mm -hmm. began to self-medicate mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. some began to binge television and yes. binge Netflix and streaming services because at the core root, we, we felt you know unsettled. And so as we began to emerge back into normal life, if you will. We find ourselves going back to those routines, but I believe it really comes down to the matter of intentionality mm -hmm. and living a life on purpose and knowing that Jesus came in John 10, 10 uh, to give us life and to give it more abundantly, to be tapped into the life of the vine, that although we may be back into routines and going back, kids are going back into school for the most part, <laughs> people are working again, mm -hmm. people are going back into houses of worship again, uh, that we find that the purpose of God will actually be something exciting, even in spite of what you're dealing with every day on your routine of life. I expect that the Holy Spirit's gonna lead and guide me into all truth every day. Mm -hmm. So when you wake up every morning expecting to hear the voice of God and believing that he will download into your spirit what he has for you today, you know, maybe he'll just give you a verse, but you'll find an opportunity throughout your day just to call somebody up or minister that word. And, and all of a sudden you'll find that it, that's exciting because you're lifing somebody else. Right. Our connectedness to other people really has a whole lot to do with our purpose. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I like your term uh, downloading because mm -hmm. I use that term when I'm talking to a lot of my friends. Sometimes I, an inspiration comes and it's just like a, a download all yes. of a sudden. Right I guess it's something like what Peter said when he said, Thou art the Christ, the right. Son of the living God. That was said, a download well, from heaven. Yeah, flesh and blood didn't reveal that yeah, to you. Right. That's a download. <laughs> That's right. I, I think a lot of, you know, when we talk about purpose, I think it's so important that we understand and ask, even ask the question, is my purpose dependent on my current circumstance? Wow. <laughs> is it dependent wow. on my current circumstance? Yeah. Because <laughs> when I read in Philippians, I see Paul who is shackled in chains in prison, yeah. 
who says, I can do all things through Christ, <laughs> yes. which strengthens me. Mm -hmm. Now, what all things? Because when we look back in Paul's history, I mean, he took 195 stripes for, the, for his very own people because his purpose was that many might be set free. Mm -hmm. right. right. And so when I think about my purpose and my design and my intent and who I am, can it really be dictated by what this world brings? Yeah, right. Or is it dictated by who I serve? And is my purpose really starting with Christ? And if it is, mm -hmm. when I have more or when I have less, I'm still where he wants me to be. We used to sing this old song in the church, farther along, we'll know all about it. Farther mm -hmm. along, mm -hmm. we'll understand why. And the why for us is so paramount, especially in hardship. But like my brother was talking about the Apostle Paul, you know, here he finds himself in the predicament of prison. And because he is shackled, his message actually goes out further yeah. because he's mm -hmm. putting pen to paper. Mm -hmm. Or paper, mm -hmm. to, yeah, pen to paper, excuse me. <laughs> and so through that experience of being imprisoned or self-quarantined or socially isolated, right. His ability to convey uh, the truth of the gospel actually went out further as if, you know, instead of if he was free. Hey, he wrote nearly half the New Testament. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> From a jail cell, self-quarantined. Mm -hmm. And I want to just say on top of that, if your purpose is, is true, okay, if your purpose is true, regardless of what goes on around you, what it is and what you do is still going to come out greater. And so let me, and let me try to portray this the way that I'm thinking it is despite our circumstance, God is still greater in the midst of our tragedy and in our hurt and in our limits because he's limitless. And so I think it's just so important for us to understand that, that although I may be upset because, you know, I can't do certain things at certain times, my purpose has to be bigger than that. Mm -hmm. And that, we're that's connected to the eternal purposes of right, God. Right, right, right. And I think it's interesting that while well, Paul was imprisoned, and yet he figured out a way to keep on ministering. And I think that's what the world is really looking for. The, the playing field is level in that we're all dealing and experiencing with COVID. But what God is wanting to do is to have leaders, spiritual leaders, rise up above that circumstance yes. and begin to figure out how to minister, yeah. figure out how to reach out. And with all the technology that we have in the world today, yeah. Yeah. right, let's use it for the glory of God. Figure yeah. out how to reach out to people and to help continue to meet needs. Well, we, we have examples in the Bible of, of the characters doing exactly that. I mean, when Jesus, uh, you know, went up to the hilltop to speak, he was creating an amphitheater, which was a That's modern, right. a very modern way to uh, speak. Also, Paul and writing, that was kind of a new thing, and he was using it, you know. So, so we, we, we Christians have actually set a precedent right. on using... Uh, we'll say current media to get the word out. And that's exactly what Paul was doing. And he found great purpose in his life, went beyond existing when he was definitely quarantined. Right. Uh, he found a way to use those things to his advantage. And, and we today are the beneficiaries of that because if he hadn't written those things, we wouldn't have them. Right. Do you think people today that are being isolated by COVID-19 are having a better opportunity to do some in introspection? Yes, They're not absolutely. really navel gazing. They're looking a lot deep of, within. A lot of the noise has been turned off. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's an inner voice coming up mm -hmm. that they can hear a lot better. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think there's a, there's a pro side to that, and I think there's also a con side to that. Um, we know that the enemy, one of the greatest tools that it uses is that, that division, that isolation. And oftentimes when that happens, for those that aren't close to God, or even those that some are, um, oftentimes the enemy's voice becomes louder than the voice of God. Sure. Mm -hmm. And because community is so important, like we were hitting so. on, is that when you have a brother or a sister that's beside you, that's spurring you on, mm -hmm. that is a voice that we need in this time. So I, I really say it like this. I know we're pastors and I know we sit here and we do work within the church, but for someone that's out there that's, that's watching this, that maybe you, you've not been able to go back to your church, I think it's so important that we realize that the focus in our home, whether they're, we're a mom or a dad, or just a Christian that's living alone, make sure that you're still having that community in some way, that you're not just isolated, because you are going to have those deeper questions. You are going to start doing some self-inspecting. Those things are going to happen. The question is, are you staying in true community with God during those times and with the church? And mm -hmm. by church, I'm not talking about inside a building. Right. I'm talking about people who believe in the same God that you believe in. And so that's, that's something that we really have to do. 
Here's another question, and, and perhaps this comes out of the isolation of COVID-19. How should I live knowing that I will die? This is a person that obviously, with the way the question is framed, they know they have life ahead of them, but they know eventually they're going to die. I don't know whether this person is a believer or a non-believer. Let's say they're a non-believer. What would you say this person should be saying to himself, herself? What, what goals should they be saying? My fear is actually, you know, not of death, but really not of living. Right. Because Psalm 90 verse 12 says, Lord, teach us to number our days. Teach us to be intentional about the allotment of time given to us because death is given, but life is really not. I do lots of funerals and I do funerals of the very young as the mm -hmm. very old. Mm -hmm. And so all we can do is be accountable for what we've received today mm -hmm. and to fully know that we've got to be purposeful. We have to be intentional with the time that we're living yeah, and that we're giving the best of ourselves with the help of the Holy Spirit in spite of all the challenges that are surrounding us right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, though, what, what gives life its greatest meaning, though, is the fact that at least the life that we know now is not permanent. It's the fact that it does end. If you think about everything in life, you, you treasure it more when you know you're not going to have it forever. I think about, you know, if you're having a, a, a Thanksgiving dinner. I mean, you know, your whole family's there and it's this great experience. But, but you treasure that because you know that we're not going to be sitting at this table for the next, you know, umpteen years. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this, this experience is going to end. Or, you know, you go away on a trip or you, you go someplace you enjoy it or you go watch a movie or something, something you enjoy. You, you savor it because you know it's going to end. And I think mm -hmm. what I would say to this person is knowing that death is a reality helps us treasure what we have today, make the most of what we have today. And, uh, and that, that's a motivating factor. I think that's kind of what you were getting to, is uh, it, it, it enables us to be motivated to make the best of what the good Lord has shared with us and the, and the days, weeks, months, and years that he shared with us. And it is hard because um, everything in life changes. Yeah. And we grieve change. No one likes change unless it's their idea. So as parents get older, as family get-togethers or, or less family vacations, uh, savoring those mm -hmm. moments are, are, are really important and making Absolutely. the most of them and just not being apathetical or going on autopilot you know, through your day. I mean, I looked, um, my daughter started kindergarten mm -hmm. and hey. I was a bawling mess with her yes. mother because I realized I'm grieving her, her as a child, as a baby. Wow. And this is a many, you know, first of many changes and we don't really like change. Yeah. All I can tell you is keep her on your lap as long as you can. Right. Because when she gets on your heart, she really gets heavy. Mm, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Very true. When I think about isolation, I think about prayer. So actually Jesus self-isolated. He did. In time. Yes. He actually isolated himself in order to reconnect, recommune yes. with yeah. the Father, yeah. right? And so he chose isolation. And although we didn't choose this isolation period right now, but we do have the same opportunity to pray. Yeah. And I'm seeing people coming together and praying more than I've ever seen in all of my years of Christianity, opportunity for the body of Christ to pour out our hearts. It really does bring in that sense of community because when I hear my brother praying and I hear my sister praying and, and through whatever media we have, maybe it's on a Zoom call or maybe it's on a phone call, but when I hear them pray, that encourages me to pray and pour out my heart to the Lord. And you know, before every great revival that ever happened, there was a great movement of prayer. Sure, sure, and sure. before that movement of prayer, there was a great crisis. Ah. So the crisis caused the church to pray and the prayer ushered in the revival. You know, I'm writing a sermon about spending time with the Lord and you just triggered something in me when you, when you talked about that. I think about the story of Mary and Martha. Mm -hmm. Martha's so busy with everything right. and Mary spent her time before the Lord and how we very often are so busy doing with, uh, doing for the Lord right. that we don't spend time That's with true. the Lord. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and this is a most refreshing time with COVID-19, we had this isolation. Yeah, it can be very troublesome mm -hmm. when you're isolated like that. Mm -hmm. right. But if we could turn some of that in quality time, I took it and I began to reconstruct some of my own mission statement mm -hmm. to say that my quality of life is dependent upon the quality time it's I spend true. with the Lord, you know? Very true. And uh, I guess, uh, what, what did David say? He, David said he believed in talking to himself. Yeah. But he said, let the, let the weak say I'm strong. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, that's what 
That's what we have to do. Listen, we got to take a break, and we're going to come right back, and we'll hear some more of the fine goodies that you have to share with us. But uh, let's pause for the cause. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pasture suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back. Happy to have you with us again. Listen, here's another question that came in from viewers that I think is a very, I guess it's a sign of the times in terms of uh, the rhetoric that's going on in our world. How do I decipher truth from all the lies? You know, I love the uh, title of the Holy Spirit. He is known as the Spirit of Truth. Yes. That you need not any man to teach you, but the Holy Spirit himself will be your instructor. He will be your tutor. He will be your guide. And in fact, there's also a gift of the Spirit, of the discerning of spirits, so that you would not be ignorant to what is the spirit behind the information that's coming. We are flooded with information. Mm -hmm. Twitter is buzzing about. We've got all kinds of social media opinions, but the fact is what we're starving for is revelation. Because I really do believe we're inundated with information, but we really need, need revelation because revelation will end up resulting in transformation. Yes, yes, and what we want to yes. be is we want to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Yes, sir. And that's the danger that, that this question gets to. It's, it's, it's what exactly are we talking about? Are we talking about truth in kind of a, a, a gospel, godly kind of way? Are we talking about I'm watching the TV and is this actually truth or what's the spin here? Right. What I always tell people when you're watching the news, because <laughs> we've talked about that a little bit, <laughs> if you don't hear the spin or don't recognize the spin, it only means you agree with it. Right. And, and, and that, that, that's all that tells you. And uh, so you want to be careful about that. Uh, I, I think I agree with you that this, there, there is a spirit of truth. And, and if you go through all the, the scripture passages that talk about truth, there's a bunch of them. And the reason is because we sometimes, standing in a moment, have a hard time discerning that. So what I would say is, uh, and this is, you know, this is what the answer we say about everything, but I would recommend a, a healthy dose of prayer around that because uh, th there's clarity in prayer and clarity in connection with the spirit that we're not going to get from any other media outpost, especially Twitter. And, uh, and I think if we go to those places looking for truth, we will be disappointed regardless sure. of what we read. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Bill, it, you know, in well, John 17, 17, Jesus said, thy word is truth. Yes. And I, I want to just ping pong off of what these guys already said. And so sometimes uh, our emotional reaction is not what we should be led by. So when we hear something and we react to it, not necessarily are waiting for the truth. So how do we pause? How do we pause for a download? And how do we pause to do what Tim said? And that is pray. Yeah. So let's pray first. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth and allow him to download what the truth is. Mm -hmm. And instead of re reacting, then we can respond with the truth. Yes, you responses know, are always better than reactions, always. Exactly. Yeah. And, but there are certain narratives to which we enjoy listening to and sometimes we have to ask ourselves, why am I desiring to continue and to come back to hearing this, some of the same rhetoric or conspiracies? The Bible says we're not even supposed to be giving any attention to conspiracies, right. but yet we still have those things perpetuated throughout social media mainly. And so it's really important for us to take a step back and say, why is it that I'm desiring this information, this source continually? What is it that I'm actually needing or desiring? What do I need? The word is truth. I think that's what we really need to uh, begin to dwell upon, think upon, desire. Two, two things here. Paul in the first chapter of uh, Romans speaks about how man suppresses the truth because he doesn't want to deal with it. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, Pontius Pilate when interrogating yeah, Jesus before truth. turning him over for, to the mob to be crucified, he, he's questioning Jesus, and Jesus talked about how his followers follow him because of the truth. And he looked at Jesus and he says, what is truth? Sure. And turned and walked away before Christ could even answer it. Right, sure. Uh, what about, how do you bring those into perspective in the search for truth? The, the question is, are you coming before the throne of God with your own agenda? Mm -hmm. that, that's the question. 
Do you want, do you want truth because he is the way, the truth, and the life? Or do you want uh, a higher power to support your agenda? Your own truth. That, that, that's the question you have yeah, to ask. Yeah. But for me, when I spend time with the Lord, I want him to break in. I want him to break everything in my heart that is not pure, that is not of him, that if it goes against his way, if it goes against the kingdom, I want him to break in and tear that up, man, <laughs> so that I can break out. Yeah. And when yeah. I break out, he can break through. Mm -hmm. And there has to be that, that longing for his spirit, that yearning for his spirit. That Lord reveal to me the lies, just the way that you know the enemy's been doing this for a long time. Since the garden, since, since the garden, right? right. right. And, and even it heaven. is, yes. it is a very pro uh, systematic approach. It has been done a long time, over and over again. Mm -hmm. We can focus on that, or we can focus on the one that gives nothing but truth and life. And out of that is where I will set my eyes and follow. You want to add okay, I thought sure it was going to be a follow-up to that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you're talking about this has always been going on since the Garden of Eden. And all the way up in heaven when uh, then Lucifer right. turned Satan, uh, mm -hmm. convinced one-third of the angels of heaven to yes. join him in a plot to overthrow God. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's believing in the lie. Why, yes. why do we of human sinful nature want to believe the lie? Because we want to be in control. Uh -huh. And that's one of the greatest illusions, I believe, right now, is that we're actually in control. It's an illusion. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I, I believe this. We may be in charge, but God's ultimately in control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we um, will spend a whole lot of giving God our agendas through what we call prayer time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I think uh, the Holy Spirit's kind of like, enough of that. You've told me what you want me to do for enough of time. I get more satisfaction from, I think, piggybacking off of what you said, of receiving a download from heaven, of knowing today I have this for you, and I want you to be obedient in doing this. And my goodness, I find that if I'll take care of heaven's agenda, he's going to take care of my yeah. Christmas list. I mean, my prayer list, too. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think Very that's good. a danger we run into because you're right. That's an illusion of control. But it also is... No, to, to take that a step further, we also don't particularly like to be challenged. Once I make up my mind, I don't really want to be pushed. If you read the Gospels, Jesus literally pushed everyone. Yeah. He pushed the disciples. He pushed the stranger in the street. He pushed the Pharisees. I mean, he, he basically at one point or another made everyone angry at some point because he was pushing everybody on what they thought to get them to see that, you know, there may be a bigger agenda than yours around here. Well, even with um, the one question we had about it, should I wear a mask? Am, you know, yeah, do I have that. to wear a mask? Mm -hmm. It comes down to it because people don't want to be told what to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we don't. Mm -hmm. You it, believe that? There, I believe that I believe that too. I believe that wholeheartedly yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's this tension that's been created uh, in the church and, and it's been in the world. But, you know, the Bible says we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against, but against powers and principalities. And, and, it, and it's a spirit force. And everything we do, we're either walking in the spirit or we're not. And so regardless of which one you're walking in, one you'll be able to reveal more, but the other and you're kind of wondering why, why, why are people getting so upset so easily over one little thing that you're willing to literally condemn a brother and sister that you've known your whole entire life over if they wear a mask or if they don't. Mm -hmm. That's a spiritual warfare, man. Well, mm -hmm. I, I, I wonder sometimes who's winning in that battle right. over whether to wear the mask or not to wear it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess the people that are losing are the people that are catching the virus because they're right. in contact with somebody who didn't wear sure. a mask. Right. Absolutely. Those are, those are the losers. Right. Um, here's a question that I'd like for each of you to answer. We have some limited time left here, but um, if you had, and this is from a viewer now, if you had the opportunity to get a message across to a large group of people, what would your message be? <laughs> what would your message to a large group of people? You had that opportunity. Well, Tim Tebow, he, he, he marked it right underneath his eyes. John 316. I think that's a fantastic, oh. you know, um, method of conveying, you know, the truth. But I mean, when we come down to the elementary phase of it, God is good. Satan is bad. No matter how much, you know, you feel like you've messed up, you can always have a new beginning in God. 
that he makes all things new. I don't care how broken it is, how yes. dysfunctional it is, yes. how, what kind of a cycle that you're, you and your family have been involved in generationally. Today, if you hear his voice, you don't harden your heart as in the rebellion. God can come in and make something beautiful out of your ashes. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a little bit longer of a message, but I mean, I believe message. that's so paramount right now. My goodness, yes, yes. Pastor? I would say let your light shine before men so that people will see yeah. and glorify your Father yeah. in heaven. We, we got more time though, that, that, so you can, you can expand. Go ahead, Ed. You know, I, I would just say that in our current circumstance in our world that we live on right now, uh, death is promised. We will go through that, but not everyone will truly live. And the only way that you can truly live is to have a true relationship with Jesus Christ. There's only one way. There's only one way out of this that's good, mm-hmm. and it's Him. And so you have to make that decision for you and your house, and that's the best decision you'll ever make. Yeah, I think the message I would give everyone is uh, don't, don't buy the world's line on fulfillment. Uh, because, I, I mean, if you watch... That line being what? Well, that line being it's all about you. It's all about your satisfaction. It's all about your happiness. It's all about your comfort. It's all about your agenda. It's all, I mean... And we get that message a you know, hundred million times a day. I mean, you watch TV for five minutes, you know, five minutes, five seconds. First commercial that comes on, they say, well, you deserve this and you should go buy yeah. this and give us your money. And, and, and I, I think that, that, that the message is, is that me getting fulfilled, I am fulfilled through worldly means. And how many examples can we point to of how that does not work? You know, the right. richest people are also often the most unhappy because yeah. they, they've made that the, the means to their end. Isn't that the key? And, 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 I, and I think that if you really want to find true fulfillment, you find that in, in, in God. I mean, I, that's the simple answer. But we find that in serving his purpose because he's the one that designed us. He's the one that created us. He's the one that knit us together. So whatever we're going to find to be fulfilling, he already knows. And if we're going to follow his will for us, that's going to lead to fulfillment. Even if the world is like, what's you doing? Right. You know, why are you giving all this away and why are sure. you doing this? But there's fulfillment in that because that's what we were designed to do by our creator. Yeah. And, and I think to deny that and buy on the world's, you know, he who dies with the most toys wins idea. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that, that that leads to just the ultimate shallow nothing of life. If yeah. you could sum up Ecclesiastes, it's basically, yeah. I can get no satisfaction. I mean, it's true. <laughs> it, you know, right. you can def- definitely see the difference between the book of Proverbs when Solomon's walking Absolutely. with God right. and then when all of the, all the ladies turn his heart to yeah. the book of Ecclesiastes, yeah. you yeah. see nothing. Everything's vanity, yeah. you know, no yeah. satisfaction. Yeah, yeah. Because he tried to find it in worldly fulfillment yeah, and sure. he absolutely did not find it. Wasn't right. there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this, here, there's another question here from a viewer. Is there any true good in man or are they totally corrupt? No, there is good. One minute, gentlemen. I, that's unfair. I, I'll, I know, I'll just say there, there is good because we have the spirit and that's good. Yeah. And there's only one called good and that's the father. But his goodness is in us and living mm-hmm. through us. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. I think Jeremiah said there's no good thing found in a man except, like Pastor Tim said, when the Spirit of God lives in us. That's the only hope we have of being good. It's the fruit of the Spirit that he lists, right, that is the goodness coming out of us, and that's just evidence of the Lord. Isaiah says that our righteousness is is of filthy rags. Romans says that there is no one righteous, no, not one. Righteousness means just simply walking right, doing Mm -hmm. the right thing, Mm -hmm. right thinking, and only the Holy Spirit himself coming into a person's life can lead them to the path of righteousness. Okay. uh, That's it. We've wrapped it up beautifully. Thank you very much. We're all out of time. And I would just say for those of you that don't know Christ, you can become righteous. Amen. No no matter what your status, no matter what your background. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, our our panelists, for being with us and all that you had to share with us today. It's been marvelous. We'll be back again next week. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? 
Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We are able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.